Around a year ago, I made a video covering the history of TF2's Dust Bowl, where I compared three versions of the map between Team Fortress Classic, Pre-Fortress 2, and Team Fortress 2. And one may watch that video and think that's all there is to the history of Dust Bowl, but the truth is that there are other historical versions out there from different Team Fortress mods, and in this video, I want to go through one of them because there's hardly any documentation out there featuring it, let alone videos on YouTube. So, without any further ado, I give you Dust Bowl Valley from Fortress Forever, run on the Gold Source engine. Being released before Team Fortress 2, the devs at Fortress Forever used Half-Life 2's art style when creating this map. This means low-poly models and gritty textures, which I think fit the aesthetic of an old, rundown western mining town. And unlike Team Fortress Classic, which, let's be honest, looks quite boring, this map has a lot of detail that really immerses you. The vacant buildings scattered throughout the mountainous terrain have custom signs, decaying wood, and rusted roofs. The few models that do exist in buildings fit quite nicely, like these dynamite boxes and whiskey bottles. And although it isn't something you can see, the sounds of squeaking mice in all of the buildings are a nice touch. Now, focusing on the layout of the map, it's more comparable to Team Fortress Classic's Dust Bowl as opposed to Team Fortress 2, which of course is because this map was made before Team Fortress 2 was released, so the mappers only had one reference to go by. But despite that, there are still many key differences between these two versions, as well as similarities with the modern one, so let's go through each stage and see how they all compare. Starting with Blue Spawn Room in Stage 1, the layout is exactly the same. However, the detailing is a complete overhaul from Team Fortress Classic with these arranged wooden planks, hanging lights, and metal wire. And check out the spark that follows this fuse connected to the spawn doors that blows up when the round begins. Now that's creative. Stepping outside, things get a little more interesting. Off to the right is a line of buildings with a small staircase connecting two of them, which oddly enough is sort of what we see in Team Fortress 2, but unlike TF2, you can actually jump up here, which gives you not just a good vantage point, but the most breathtaking view of the map. This building that we're used to seeing a control point in doesn't have one, and that's because each stage only has one capture point that lies right outside of Red Spawn. But that doesn't make this building any less interesting, because there's this little attic area that you can crawl around and even shoot through. Moving into the tunnels, there are three to be exact. One on the left, one on the right, and one up top. And instead of using the staircases to get up, we have ladders because they actually work in the Gold Source engine. However, that's not to say that there aren't any staircases, because we have a lovely one right over here. The layout of the roofs here are very different from Team Fortress 2. They actually look like roofs and have varying degrees of elevation. And instead of having a bridge in the middle, we have a plank connecting the back. Now the building which we'd expect to see the second control point in doesn't have one either. And to be frank, this building's layout and design are just completely different from the other two versions of the map. But besides that, the rest of the stage is practically the same. Though I do want to quickly point out the level of detail over in Red Spawn, particularly this elevator and tramway. Onto the second stage, things start out looking familiar just like at the start of the first, but on the shack to the right we have a sign that reads Drink Sprut Cuck. Now I don't know what Sprut Cuck is, but I'd certainly like one. On the inside next to the staircase, there's volumetric lighting and dust particles that really emphasize the dry, dusty climate. Over on the left is Dillo's Hardware, which has the same set of rooms and hallways we're all familiar with, but it has windows with breakable shutters facing the Sprut Cuck shack. And on the flank route, well, now it's only a flank route if you're playing a vertical mobility class. However, one place you can go as any class is this dirt mound off in the corner, which looks to be a good place to go if you're playing Sniper, unlike Fudex Disinformation Logistics. While this building's exterior is pretty impressive, the interior is very lacking, having only some benches placed up against the walls. But you know what isn't disappointing? This tunnel right here. Upon entering, there's this massive death pit along the left side of the walkway that's very tempting to jump into. But before we do that, let's go back over to the main tunnel on the right. It splits into three other tunnels, with the first two leading out to the middle, and the right tunnel looping all the way around to Mr. Beefy's Meats, which looks to be a great place to bring a vegan to on a date. And just like in Team Fortress Classic, there's this little nook off to the side accessible by a ladder which is the perfect place for a sentry gun. But enough of Mr. Beef's meats. Check out this luxurious building right by the capture point called Dusty Arms Hotel. 
It's got a massive open area that loops all the way around the building, and not only does red spawn here, but it's even got its own bar. Though, I'd stay away from the drinks unless you're a fan of hamburger whiskey. On to the third and final stage, Blue only has one tunnel to exit their spawn, but unlike Team Fortress Classic, whose tunnel is pure chaos, Dust Bowl Valleys is wider and accessible from two sides, so it's not as bad. And once you're out, you have a lot more cover. The building that separates this area from that which holds a control point in TF2 is much larger and blue players can actually crouch through these windows to help push forward. And further up on the left hand side is the Dust Bowl Opry with a large ad featuring my future wife. And if you go further inside, we've got some more lovely volumetric lighting with dust particles and an even better picture of my future wife. Next to the Opry is a chain of small buildings, with one housing a bunch of dynamite that unfortunately you can't blow up. Across from it is the salon and bathhouse, but more bad news, you can't take a bath. In the home stretch, there's the Dust Bowl Valley Mining Co. management offices, which I have to give credit for. They do look pristine, especially with those mice sounds I mentioned earlier. But for some reason, this wall is super shiny with a cube map reflection of the building directly across. Now remember how I said you couldn't take a bath in the bathhouse? Well, if you go up this ladder and make your way down the hall and to the left, there is not one, but two bathtubs. Enough for you and a friend. Oh, and need I say that there's another bottle of hamburger whiskey there too? Backing up a bit, instead of a staircase, there's a trap door and ladder that brings you down to this tunnel that lets you out into the main valley. And just like in the other versions of Dust Bowl, there isn't anything down here, and you only have a single ladder to get out. Alright, so wrapping up with the final control point, the only way to get here is by crossing the main bridge or by jumping across the valley from the bathhouse. There's one spawn exit on the left, and another one up the stairs to the right. And up the stairs to the center is a small dark room, which I presume is the go-to sniper spot in this map. Now for those of you curious about how the spawn rooms look, they aren't that impressive, but the flooring in the left does look pretty cool with the metal grates on the edges. And that's Dust Bowl Valley! Now, one thing I didn't mention when touring the map is that you can actually jump on top of a bunch of different buildings that we'd see clipped off in TF2. But most of these particular buildings don't have any easy access points and are kind of out of the way, which is why I didn't go over them in this video. But they're there, so I figured I might as well mention them. If you want to explore this map on your own, there's a link to Fortress Forever on Steam down in the description. And who knows, maybe I'll port this over to TF2 just like I did with Team Fortress Classics Dust Bowl and we can have a public event where I livestream myself playing with all of you guys. So if you're interested in that, be sure to join my Discord server using the link in the description. Anyways, thanks for watching. This is LED switching off.